Hey, welcome back to another exciting and entertaining episode to How to Tie with your guide, Shannon, from Takasiti Fly Shop. Hey, as you can see here, I'm now an official member of the Flatbill Mafia. Got this new hat. It just came in from Sims the other day, and we've got a full selection of these awesome, awesome hats, man. So it's kind of cool. It's really not my style, but people have commented about me not wearing one. So here we go, folks. I, here I am. I've got one. So for video purposes and maybe some podcasting purposes, this might be part of the official uniform of the day. So today, I'm going to be sharing with you a fly that's very important to the Messer family here in North Carolina. This fly was developed many, many years ago by someone that we call Charlie Bear. His name was actually Charles Cameron Messer. And I learned to tie this fly from Charlie Bear sitting down in his basement in, in Panther Creek. And we would tie not only this fly, but we would uh, tie other uh, flies that were family flies only and other old patterns that had been used here for a long, long time ago. Uh, and they all still catch fish today. The cool thing about this fly is, uh, number one, it's, it's never been put into mass production and I wanna keep it that way. So if you're trying to steal this fly, shame on you. That's the ultimate slap in our family's face. Uh, number two is I guide with this fly a lot in the summer months here and actually do a few variations on it. I do sell them at the shop. That's about as far as we go with that fly. And it is a good fish producer. And the people that certainly fish that fly understand the, the heritage and history behind that fly. I did tie it at the uh, Buff uh, show when I was doing a presentation here a few weeks ago. And since then, I've got a few emails from folks wanting me to do it one more time, so I'm going to do this. Uh, speaking of that, it was great seeing a lot of folks up in uh, Virginia. We've been from Virginia, we've been to Ohio, and now we're gearing up to go to Michigan. So look forward to seeing you folks in Michigan if you have a chance to come out and see us over the weekend up there, which is going to be in March. And also, thanks for listening to our podcast. Those things are rocking. We're getting some really great comments on that. So with that being said, if you look above my shoulder, you might see that shadow box up there. That's got a lot of old history in it that I learned from Charlie Bear for sure. So let me uh, go ahead and get off here and let's tie you folks to Charlie Whopper. Hey folks, let's go ahead and get started on this Charlie Whopper. As you can see here in my Norvice, I already have a hook inserted into my standard jaw. It is a fully male, size 12, model number FM1180. I fished this in a 10, which is my favorite size, and a 12. So don't freak out on the size 10. The thread I have on my Norvice bobbin here is actually Vivas. It's a 10 in black. Uh, Charlie Bear would use a lot of brown thread, so if you have brown, that's fine too. You can go ahead and, and do that as well. As you can see right here with the Norvice, I want to put me down a quick little thread base. It's quicker than putting thread on here is faster than a hiccup that you might have. Okay, so I've brought my thread up here to nearly, not necessarily the eye to hook. Let's kind of split that difference a little bit up in here. So we're going to set our wings. Now our wings on this here is actually bronze mallard. Uh, I like getting the, the feathers that have a little bit more of the darker color uh, on them right in through here. So I'm going to strip away some of these really, really soft fibers here, get down to the part that I want to use for the wings, and I'm going to be able to kind of pull these to the side here and clip those and get what I need. There's a little bunch. Let me get a little bit more. Sweet. Love tying flies out of wings like uh, material like this here, feathers like this. They're just super durable and they look really good. So as far as the, the height of the wing, we always tied our flies large. We wanted a bushy fly. Um, so I'm going to kind of go about the uh, length of the hook there, the shank of the hook. And go ahead and get my thread a counterclockwise spin so it jumps back. Get a few wraps on it like that. I'm going to reach in here with my Dr. Slick scissors and go back. Based the way I'm kind of propping everything here, you would believe that I'm actually a NASCAR driver. You know, after they've won the race, you know, saying, hey, man, i got to thank, you know, Ford Motor Company and, you know, Dr. Pepper and the guys back at the shop. Man, they did a really good job getting that engine ready there for me. But, you know, the track conditions today were really awesome out there. Got to thank my spotters and all that stuff. So, anyway, let's get back to fly tying. <laughs> so, so, we're actually going to use that same feather. We're going to use that for the tail as well. Going to reach in there and grab that. Hope you guys enjoy that. I actually think that they're actually racing today. It's hard to believe that that we're about to that time of the year where racing's back. 
I think they're doing those dual 125s down in Florida today there. So there we go. Probably skinny. One of my Navy buddies is probably down there. He goes about every year. He lives in Vero. So uh, I'm sure that's a fun time. Now you're like, Shannon, what the heck did you do right there? What I do, and it's just me, and that's the great thing about tying your own flies, is with these style wings, I went ahead, since my thread was back here, I went ahead and tied in my tail, and I just spun my thread back up to the front, just like I said, quicker than a hiccup that you might have. Now I'm going to lift up these wings like so, kind of prop up in the front, okay? If you're not comfortable doing it that way, take your half-hitch tool, put you a little bit of thread down back up against it like so. I'm going to drop that out the way there momentarily. And then I kind of already have a natural part, kind of like the natural part in your hair right there. So I'm going to kind of start doing a few uh, figure eight wraps in there momentarily, crisscross and come in front. All right, now here we go. Sweet one, two around, boom, 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 around, locking in place, boom, 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 around, locked in place, sweet. So just like that, we have set us up some really good looking wings here, okay? I love these wings. I think they're awesome. Now, you say that one of the things I like about these wings, and especially like with the Norvice, is you're spinning. You know, I can get in here like this, and, it, and those wings hit that uh, hit your bobbin. It doesn't hurt them. You know, they can move around. You can do what you want to. Okay, sweet. So, for the body, we actually use muskrat dubbing off the belly of muskrat. It's kind of a darker gray. Um, the original material that we used, which you can't really get no more, was a very kind of charcoal-y looking yarn. Uh, but you just can't find that color anymore. And this here is about the closest that we can get to that. But it does a good job when it's wet, look, give, kind of giving that similar look to it there as well. Uh, I have experimented with other ones out there on the market, dubbings, and just not come up with one that really does any better than this muskrat for sure. All right, so I'm gonna kind of get that in there like so. I'm gonna give my little Norvice a spin. Looking pretty sweet. Looking pretty righteous. Awesome. Awesome. There we go. Put a, just a little bit more dubbing. Now, you folks have seen some of the other videos where you've seen me kind of take and I've spun the dubbing onto the thread. Uh, here for this particular fly, I like kind of doing it more traditional pattern, traditional way. I'm just going to put a little bit more right there before we tie in this other wing. Nice. But feel free to tie in the dubbing any way you want to do that. Now, so far you're saying, hey, this is looking like anything else out there. This is where the difference comes in. Now I'm going to take some of the other fibers that's left on this feather right here, and I'm going to pull them down, and I'm going to gather them to where the tips are pretty close to the same, and I'm going to pull those off. This is what's pretty sweet about this fly is now I'm gonna put a wing in that goes back over the fly, okay? I'm gonna go about the length of the tail right there. So it gives a really, really unique look on this particular fly. So I think that's what's been so cool about this pattern is that it actually could mimic anything from a, uh, from a mayfly. It could actually imitate a stone fly. It could be mistaken for a caddis pattern. But uh, as you can see, I've got that in there like so. I'm gonna come in here like this put a few little wraps in through there to kind of help secure that down momentarily. And we are sweet on that. Okay, cool. Hope you guys are liking that so far. And ladies, um, there, let me kind of get my thread position back there just a little bit, having a little bit of difficulty seeing here with the, with the light. Let me try to adjust that up a little bit right there. It's a little bit in my eye, so there we go. All right, so now to finish this thing off here, I'm gonna take a grizzly and I'm gonna take a um, kind of a dark brown feather in there. Use what you've got. If all you've got is grizzly, take a grizzly, take you a Sharpie marker and color up one side of it there to give you that, uh, you know, two colors on it. Feel free to do that. We call the grizzlies dominickers. Um, so if you grow up around a farm or, or where you had, you know, chickens and roosters and guineas and stuff like that running around, they were called dominickers. So I'm gonna kind of take these here. I wanna get these both tied in here momentarily. And I did not tie one of these up this morning before I did the video. A lot of times I'll kind of do that just to kind of get my bearing straight on it and get, you know, it's like a warm up. Got those in there like that. Sweet, put me in a half hitch. I'm gonna take my bobbin over here to the bobbing rest on Norvice. Now we're gonna wrap these hackles. I had a question the other day in the email about how many wraps do you put in front of the, the feathers and how far, how many do you do behind. That 
and I emailed back, the answer really depends on how far forward your wings are. Um, that doesn't matter whether it's a Charlie Whopper or an Atom or, uh, you know, uh, you know, a Jim Charlie uh, Mayfly pattern, a Pink Lady, an Adams variant, uh, you know, a Royal Wolf, Royal Coachman, uh, anything that has an upright wing like that, depending on where your wings are placed, will determine how many wraps you may get in front and how many wraps you would get in behind those feathers with your hackle. So that's the important thing. The other important thing about any fly that you tie is if you cannot get your tippet through the eye of that hook, it doesn't matter how good the fly is. I mean, you just can't use it. It's kind of rendered useless. I'm going to try to slide in there like so and get that trimmed out so I don't break anything and cut my thread off, which, you know, does happen occasionally. I'm going to take my trusty, dusty whip finisher here, put a couple of whip finishes in it, and we can call this fly here pretty well complete. A little bit of head seam in on there, and this bad boy is ready to go into the fly box and fool one of those awesome wild mountain trout that we have here in western north carolina and more specifically uh, the great smoky mountains in the, the blue ridge area so as you can see that silhouette right there it kind of gives you that neat see that wing right in through here it kind of gives you that uh, looking up from below what the fish are looking at and then as you come around just look at that profile on that it's pretty awesome i think it's pretty doggone slick uh it's been a great fish producer for us um i have uh, folks in our family that want them bigger than this like I said, a 10, and I'll actually almost like oversize the hackle to a size 8, make it just really huge and bushy, and it floats like a dang cork. It's a fly that stands up, takes notice, and it just just fishes really good. Uh, I've got uh, other guides in the shop that, that, you know, specifically fish these personally for themselves, and and uh, it's, it's definitely one of our favorites for sure. Um, just wanted to share this with you. Um, I'm going out on a, uh, taking a risk here by sharing this with everybody, but uh, hopefully folks, you enjoy it. You'll understand the history behind it and certainly will appreciate it. Tie you some up, you know, just get you some materials and have at it. If you have any questions, email me at shannon at tuckflyshop.com. That'll come directly to me there. Uh, of course, give us a call 1-828-488-3333. And be sure to listen to the Tuck Cast with a splash of bourbon. That's very entertaining, and we've had a blast with that so far. On all of the, all those major things, you know, Spotify and iTunes and iHeart and all that stuff like that. So anyway, there you go. There we go. We got the Charlie Whopper right there, folks. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Y'all take care.